um, we want to make sure you guys know about Patreon. Oh, yes. So Patreon is a way that you can contribute to us and the podcast to help us fund to do the things that we need to do. Like if we need new equipment, um, anything. Yeah, it pays for hosting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you go to startafashiontruck.com backslash Patreon, then you will be able to get to the site to make a pledge. Or if you go to the show notes, there's like a big shiny blingy mic that says (laughs) (laughs) help support the show. You can click on that and it'll link you right to where you need to be. Because this is really a labor of love for us, right? Like, where you guys have the fashion trucks, we do, we only have our voices <laughs> and our words on the on our website. And so, it you know, when you guys support us through things like Patreon or clicking on affiliate links, like, it really does help us kind of stay in business, if you will. And by the way, Patreon is spelled P A T. R E O N. So yes. again, that's startafashiontruck.com backslash Patreon. And a huge thank you to the folks that have already like pledged something. Um, it really does mean a lot. Absolutely. Now, moving on to who we have on the show today, we are chatting with Carrie, the owner of of Libby Simone Mobile Boutique in St. Helena, California. She is an awesome gal. She has a fashion um, a fashion merchandising degree. So she has a background in, in fashion. So it kind of like was a little easier for her to start her mobile boutique. She already had in mind what she wanted to do. And she wrote out her a brief little business plan to help her transition in the process. Yes. And what's interesting, too, is like for those of you guys in a small town, I think you'll be able to relate to her because she's also in a small town. So she's not in one of those like bigger cities like New York or L.A. And so she talks about kind of realistic expectations when it comes to operating in an environment where it's, you know, not a big city. So if you want to hear more about Libby Simone Mobile Boutique, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Can I Park Here? We have Carrie from Libby Simone. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for coming on. Um, Before, you know, we get started, you know, talking about the actual truck, can you just uh, give the listeners a little background about you before the truck? Oh, absolutely. Um, So I've always loved fashion and style. Um, I have a degree in fashion merchandising from the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. I graduated in 2003. Um, So it's always been um, an industry that I've wanted to work in. It's my creative outlet. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, You know, I've always loved what I call the magic of clothing and that's clothing's ability to when worn correctly, change the shape of the body, give the illusion of different proportions and how that can help give confidence and truly make a difference about how a woman feels about herself. So, um, so when did you decide to start a mobile boutique? Well, I was, uh, it was December of 2015 and I was, my kids were on Christmas break and I was home with them and I was, I read an article, I'm not even sure how I found it, but I read an article about the first fashion trek open in, that opened in LA Mm, and mm -hmm. um, it just hit me and I was just like, oh my goodness, this is how I can get back into working in fashion, working with my degree, because I'd been out of it for so long. It just hit me. This is, this is what I have to do. Um, I I just said, I have to go for it. And um, it was something that was realistic financially. I could shop all the time, which is really (laughs) fun for me. Um, It was creative and risky and 
I don't know. It was just, it was just the light bulb moment. And so how long did it take you from the concept to deciding, hey, you know what? I want a truck to actually buying the truck and getting everything together? Um, about five months Okay. from, from that the light bulb moment. Um, I opened, I had my grand opening um, in May of 2016. Okay. And, and so when you decided to start looking for the truck, what preparations did you take? Did you start to make a business plan or did you just kind of wing it? I made an informal business plan. I did hours and hours and hours of research. I stayed up way too late, many, many nights mm-hmm. um, just because I couldn't. It's like a good book. I just couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop doing research. I couldn't stop taking notes and, you know, from listening to your podcasts to um, reading articles, um, finding out all I could about some of these other women who've um, opened fashion trucks. And so it, it just kind of evolved like that. I tried to educate myself the best that I could. And so at what point did you find like the truck that you were looking for? Like where, you know, cause I know there's like so many options, like even like you could do a trailer versus a truck and then the trucks have like a ton of options. So when did you find like the perfect truck? Um, I found it, gosh, I think in February, if I remember correctly, I found it on Craigslist. Really. I wanted I was just concerned about size. I knew I didn't want a trailer. I wanted something I could just drive. Mm. Um, I figured it would be a little bit easier to learn how to drive a big truck than something with a trailer. And mostly I was concerned about just getting a a quality truck, one that, you know, hopefully wouldn't break down, (laughs) Um, you know. And so I relied a lot on my husband and my brother and those people in my life who know those kinds of things. <laughs> um, so um, looking on Craigslist and my husband would say, oh, you know, that one sounds really good. That motor's good or whatever. Um, and so when I went to look for it, then, you know, my brother drove it and he said he could do some things to fix it for me. And so this was really a big family affair, if you will. Um but yeah, that's how that's how I found it. I I bought the first truck that I saw actually. Oh, the first oh, wow. one! Yeah, wow. yeah, wow, yeah. That's some, <laughs> some good luck. And then, did you uh, for the inside? Did you kind of was that a family affair too? Because the inside of your yep. truck is really cool. I love like. Right. The floors and um, the track lighting you have in there. Did you guys kind of work together to do that or did you like outsource that? Uh, no, that's pretty much all my husband. Um, okay. I mean, I, <laughs> I definitely helped. I did what I could. I did the painting. I did lay a lot of the flooring. I knew exactly. I had, I had it in my mind how I wanted it. And it really turned out pretty much how I envisioned yeah, my husband's pretty talented. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was, I mean, I think that I know that I've read about a lot of other fashion truck owners who, you know, had trouble finding somebody to do it. Um, I mean, we definitely had our share of, oh, you know, how are we going to do this and just trial and error. But in the end, it turned out really great. And I'm really happy with it. Do you mind sharing how much the truck cost and your total investment? Oh yeah, not at all. Um, the truck costs nine thousand, and I've I put in initially. Uh, it was about thirty thousand dollars that I invested. Okay, which I think yeah. is pretty average. Yeah, I think the I- the lady who um we just had someone or just interviewed someone the other day, and it was like about the same price. Yeah. For your logo, is that vinyl or is that a wrap? That's a wrap. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then just with the cost, because we asked her to, because everybody splits their costs up a little bit different. So with the 30, just for people who are like you, kind of like a little bit over a year ago, um, yeah. what all did that entail? Like, so is that like the truck itself, the wrap, right? 
inventory, you know, I guess the materials for the inside. Is there like anything else just to give people an idea of like the different elements that they're going to need to consider when they decide to open up a mobile boutique? Right. Oh, did, you, yeah. did you have to have any, like, did you do any extra bells and whistles to the truck? Like, did you have to do electrical and get an AC or, you know, heater, that type of thing? Right. Um, it came with an AC, but we don't have it working because that would have taken a much larger generator. Um, we decided to just do two batteries and an inverter. So that works the track lights and, and everything else. I mean, it has a fan too, which, which does help when it's a little bit warmer. Yeah, it was just everything. And I don't know that I could even say exactly what it was. You know, I guess there was my, my iPad. I I didn't have an iPad, so I bought an iPad for my POS system. And so that was a a little bit of money. Um, Insurance, both the truck insurance and the liability insurance. Oh, it just adds up. It just just adds (laughs) up. (laughs) <laughs> That's all I can. <laughs> no, I, I it's kind. Think... <laughs> it's kind of like a wedding, right? I Which mean, a wedding yeah. is not a business, but it's like most people don't realize how much in total they pay for their wedding because <laughs> it's little things here and there, right? It's like oh, a thousand dollars here, five hundred here, two hundred here, thirty here, but then yep. within six months, if you count all those little things, <laughs> they add up like quickly, <laughs> very quickly, yeah. <laughs> How hard was it for you to find insurance? It was not that hard. I I just went through my my regular agent, my my car agent, and it was a little bit difficult for him, but but he <laughs> found he found somebody. Not too bad. Oh, no. And can you um break it down like what type of insurances do you need? Like what type of coverages do you need in order to operate a mobile boutique? So I have just the regular truck insurance, um, the automobile insurance for the truck. And then I also have a liability insurance. Um, I have a $1 million liability insurance policy, which is pretty standard. It's what most of the farmer's markets require you to have. And, and so that's what I went with. Mm. Okay, and, that, and, and so that covers your inventory as well, right? I don't believe it does. I think I would have to have, I I think part of my automobile insurance covers what's inside, but I don't have anything separate for my inventory. I live in such a rural area, a small town. I don't have to worry about some of the things that some of these other drivers do that live in major cities and maybe have to park their car, uh, trucks in storage facilities or um I'm not sure what the options are for in the cities. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So I, I didn't worry about that so much. Cause you're in St. Helena, California. St. Helena. Yes. Yeah, in the Hel- Napa Valley. How do you say it? St. Uh, St. Helena. Helena. St. Helena. Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't think I've even heard of St. Helena. So it's in- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a small town. Now, by being a small town, how does that affect your business? Like, are, is it like really popular there? Like, how are they receptive to the mobile boutique concept? It's been a combination. It's <laughs> been very well received, but then because it is a small town, I have that extra challenge of there not being so many large events to go to. That's been my challenge um, and one of my goals for this year, for 2017, is is to add more events and to maybe go outside of the Napa Valley just so that I can attend some of those larger events that, that have the traffic that I need. Mm. When, when I can get out there and I can be at events where there's lots of traffic, I do quite well. Mm. And that's the cool thing about being mobile. You can go really anywhere you want. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, I just love the concept of mobile boutique, but the only, I guess the only drawback is when you go outside of your particular area, you have to go in accordance with the rules of like parking and and that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, even just within the Napa Valley, you know, 
cities right next to each other are have been completely different in what they've required of me. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just I don't know, it's just something that you have to to get used to and and know that it's it's not going to be the same even <laughs> even for counties and cities right next to each other. Yeah. Mm. It's been interesting. I mean, it's, it's typical from, from what I read and all the research that I did it, it, they were all right. I mean, it's what they told me to expect is exactly what I'm experiencing. And do you do home parties as well? I do offer home parties. Yes. Okay. How have those been? Those have um, not turned out as, to be as popular as I thought they would be. Um, Mm. and I still haven't figured out why I, I feel like it might be, um, the area that I'm in possibly. I I really haven't figured that out. I, I just, I thought that it would be so much more well-received, but, and people are very open to it when I am out there and they come in my truck and they're so excited and they're saying how cool it is, but it just hasn't been, something that has been my strongest area. Mm-hmm. What's your, your target market? Like, who do you, who do you think wants to buy the clothing? Like, are you looking at those women? Yeah, I'm looking at, um, locals. This area is, has a very large, extremely wealthy population. Mm-hmm. And, uh, most of the stores cater to that. Mm-hmm. And, I've, I was born and raised here and, and I've always thought, you know, why isn't there something for the rest of us? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And there's a lot of us, you know, and so I said, well, I kind of got a little stubborn. I said, if no one else is going to do something about it, then I am. And, and like I said, it, it has been very well received. Uh, People love it. People love that they have an option um, that's affordable and convenient and with options that they don't see anywhere else. Even if, even if they do drive to one of our bigger cities, mm. they're, they're getting something that they, they wouldn't be able to get. There. Yeah. And it's only been like a year, so I'm sure it's going to get better. Once people yeah, start to, you know, find out months. more about you. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, not <laughs> even a year. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm growing slowly, but, but surely. And, and I'm okay with that. Um, I, that's actually, you know, how I imagined it. I, it's, it's all good. Mm. Yeah. I see that. Like, I went, I was just curious about how you determined, like, what style of clothes that you were going to invest in. And I see like, even on your Twitter, you have a sign up near your clothes saying you go from extra small to three XL. Yes. And so uh, I just would love to hear kind of like your thought process on the, not only the types of clothes you chose to buy, but you know, why did you choose to do such a wide range in sizes? Well, I found that people will come into my truck and a lot of people are looking for extra small. You know, I can't find extra small anymore or anywhere. And then I also realized shortly after I opened that there was a pretty good market for plus size. So one of my goals for 2017 is to expand my plus size line. I want, I really want to try and offer those items that people need and and that they have a hard time finding. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Your style is kind of, it seems like the types of clothes that that you're selling to are like kind of timeless pieces where you can have them for years and kind of mix and match them, you know, easily. Absolutely. Yeah. Mix and match with clothes that you already have in your closet. I I really look at the clothing that I buy from a stylist eye. I choose styles that will look good on a variety of body types, body conscious, classic styles, but with color and pattern or a unique, a unique detail, you know, something fun and unexpected. And then occasionally I try and gently push my customers out of their comfort zone too. (laughs) A lot of them will come in and say, there's, there's so much color in here. And I, 
So I say, yes, there is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And, you know, usually they'll try something and they'll say, you know, I never wear this color or I never wear something with this much color and, and they love it. Mm. So I feel like that's part of my responsibility as well to not only offer clothing options that help them feel beautiful, but also educate them a little bit on, on what they might be missing in their current mm-hmm. wardrobe. And you also, um, you do, it's so on your website, it says you do style consulting seminars. Yes. Yeah. So I've haven't done as many as I wanted to, but I'm going to be adding some more this year. So I offer free style consulting seminars. I, I really am kind of a, a stylist at heart. This is this truck is my way of providing that service to people f- for free because I really do want people to feel beautiful and feel confident. And there's so many women out there who write, you know, admit that they don't know how to dress or they hate shopping. And I'm and one of those I want <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clothes can be so much fun and they can, they can make you feel so good about yourself if, if you wear the right items. So do you do the seminars out of the truck or is it at a, um, outside location? Um, yeah, I, I usually have been doing them at a local community center and I'll take my truck. So I'll, I'll do my, my seminar and then I'll offer, um, for people to shop afterwards. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So what have you found to be over the last like eight months, the most lucrative so far? Because it sounds like you've experimented with a few things like just kind of traditional, like finding a places in the city, maybe to park and then hoping that like the the traffic nearby, the foot traffic will come in and explore. You've um, also delved into house parties. You've done like these kind of speaking engagements where seminars where you help women. And then I also see that through um, Square, you've, you also have like a online shop so people could shop online. So what has, what do you think has been the most successful so far? The most successful so far has been public events. Um, farmers markets, different art kind of events um, over over the summer. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that's like the bad part about the winter. I guess even though, because I'm thinking like, oh, you're in California, it must be just amazing year round, right? But there's still something about the summer, right, that makes people yeah. want to shop and want to go out. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've. I'm already planning for this time next year what to do different because once the farmer's markets ended and once all of those, you know, summertime events ended in October, um, it's been slower. Mm. Um, So, but you know, it's, it's just one of those things that, that you kind of learn as you go and you just have to get more creative and, and figure out what to do next time. Yeah. I, I feel like no matter where you are, the winters are always a challenge. It's like, do you do pop-up shops? Do you look for yeah. kind of those holiday fairs? But depending on what area you're in, there might only be like one holiday fair, you know, and they may or right. may not accept mobile trucks, you know? <laughs> so Right. Exactly. All those challenges. In fact, um, I actually created my own holiday fair because there weren't any other options <laughs> for me. <laughs> so it was really fun. I brought together like 23 other vendors and it it was quite successful for for a first annual holiday show so hopefully I I can do that next year as well Mm. yeah so I mean that's what I mean about getting creative I mean if it didn't exist so I just said well I'm gonna make one (laughs) right (laughs) (laughs) I forgot to ask you is this what you do full time or do you have another job as well? I have another job. I, I have a part-time job. When I first opened, I was, I kept my full-time job, but I quickly realized that it was all just too much. It's really important for me to have that work-life balance and make sure I'm not 
um, make sure I'm spending enough time with my kids and my husband. And so I, I resigned from my full-time job and I got a part-time job and it's, it's working very well. Okay. I mean, I, the ultimate goal will be to, to work on my uh, truck full time at some point, but for right now, this is working well. Okay. Oh, that's great. And another thing I forgot to ask you <laughs> <laughs> when we were talking about um, getting together the truck and the build out and the purchase of the truck and, you know, everything else, did you have to save up for that or did you get a loan? I, I got a loan from my family. (laughs) (laughs) One of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just said, you know, this is kind of my dream. This is what I want to do. And, and, um, I apparently made a good case for myself (laughs) (laughs) because I've been well supported by my very wonderful family. So, um, it was, it was a combination. It was, um, my husband and I putting some and yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I think that's great. I mean, cause it's, you know, as people, and we talked about this with some other guests, it's important for people to understand that it is an investment. You may need some help with that investment and you might not make that. Most people don't make that investment back in a year too, right? It yeah. takes right. a little bit of time. Yes. I am very blessed. I, I understand that not everybody has this option and yeah, I, I'm very grateful. Yeah. Cause I, you know, and I was wondering about the loan thing because with bank loans, it's very tricky when you first start a business, you don't yeah. know how it's going to go. So you have to think, okay, well, how am I going to pay this loan back? Right. You know, because yeah. right. yeah. most, most of the mobile boutique owners or just small business owners in general, it's hard to even pay themselves. Right. The beginning. <laughs> right. No, I haven't paid myself anything. Uh, and, and that's okay. I, I fully expected that. You know, it's, it, you have to love it. I mean, it, it, it has to be something that you just love so much that you're, I mean, you're working for free, but it doesn't feel like that for me. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. It's just, it's just what I do and it's so much fun and I could spend hours and hours. I could spend a lot more time than I do now. Right. working on it. <laughs> but that's good, right? Because that's what keeps yeah. you going. Because Absolutely. even if you have like hard days or hard months, if you love what you're doing, that is going to continue to kind of push forward and try to like, you know, do what you need to do in order to make it what you want it to be. But that love has to be there. No, no, no. Absolutely. It does. And there are definitely hard days for sure. But there's also days that are just fantastic and it, and they just pick you back up. And then, so what's, you know, so you're hitting eight months, you're, you're almost at that year mark, which will be in May. What's next? So what do you have planned? Like, you know, I know you say, you know, now that you're almost a year in, you're going to maybe do some things a little bit differently. So kind of what is uh, the future of Libby Simone? Um, the future of Libby Simone is to expand some of the lines to add more events and then to add more collaborations with, with local businesses. Um, when I opened in May, I kind of missed my window for a lot of the summertime events that happen in the Valley. So I, I immediately started planning for getting into those and, and being a part of those for 2017. Um, at this point, I feel like, I have, I want to add more collaborations with, with other local businesses in the area. And I feel like since I've been doing it for eight months now, I, I can do that for, for 2017. I think I'll be able to add a lot more collaborations, a lot more events, um, get out there more. No, that's great. Do you have a favorite podcast, blog, book, or TV show? And if so, what is it? Oh, I've been getting back into um, Project Runway recently. Oh. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm i not a big TV watcher, so I just have the recordings right now. I, I don't even really know what season we're in currently. <laughs> um, 
I want to possibly add some of my own designs in 2017. So I think that's why I got into watching Project One Way again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it takes like watching stuff like that and then you get inspired and yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, I've... I haven't watched Project Runway in a couple of years, but whenever I do, I get addicted again, which is mm-hmm. good and bad. But <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's been bad for me. Right, <laughs> doing way too many late nights when I could be working on other things. <laughs> and if you could have any celebrity, entertainer, model, athlete, whoever visit your mobile boutique, who would it be? Oh, that's so funny. I'm so embarrassed to say, but I've had fantasies of the Kardashians coming and just the <laughs> amount of publicity that I can have. <laughs> oh, sometimes I feel like they're so annoying, but yeah, I'll, I'll admit it. I'll just admit it. I Hey, you know what? But the I've thing about this. it is all it takes is them to come in. They do like one little tweet or one little shout out exactly. or wear one piece from your truck. And then all of a sudden, like you just blow up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, bigger than I want to be, probably. Yeah. Right, exactly, exactly. More than, than you, like, want. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and what do you like to do in your free time just to wind down and de-stress? Oh, well, I live in the Napa Valley, so we have um, a lot of great restaurants. Um, so I love going out to eat, love good food, love good wine. Um I have uh, twins who are six years old, and so it's important to me to give them as much attention as I can and spend time with them. And actually, switching jobs from full-time to part-time has really been a blessing in that area. I feel really good about that. I know. That's a big step. What would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Oh, I would quit my job. Um, I would open up maybe a brick and mortar. Mm. Mm. I would not be hesitant to go all in 100%. Wow. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Mm. It's like doable, achievable goals. That's 2017. Into 2017, you'll be there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And where can the listeners find you? Please let them know um, your website and any social media handles. Oh, yeah. Um, So my website is LibbySimone.com. And my handles for Instagram and Twitter are LS, as in Libby Simone Fashion Truck. And I'm on Facebook. Um, It's Libby Simone LLC. Awesome. Well, thank you, Carrie. We really appreciate you coming on to the show. And uh, yeah, I I know that your episode will inspire others to kind of take that risk too. So thanks again. I hope so. Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. It was interesting to me, like, you know, from extra small to 3XL, that's a huge, like, that's a wide variety of sizes. Yeah, so she's going to have to curate her inventory very carefully. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, because the, the space in the truck is not going to be that small. So it's like you mm-hmm. can't have, like, multiples of every single size. She'd probably have to kind of, like maybe, you know, through trial and error, determine which are, what sizes are the best ones, best sellers to keep in the truck. Mm-hmm. I know. I think we've had some people on before that talked about like the consulting kind of services that they provide or styling that provide, but it's interesting. Like hers, like she specifically says consulting seminars that take place at, you know, a specific location. So that's like a little bit different. It's like a little bit of of a different spin on that. Mm-hmm. No. Hmm. But no, um, I think, uh, you know, another great story and um, another successful story. Cause she did that fast. Yeah. Five she did. months, you know, and I feel like uh, it's interesting this season. I think on average, um, the price to start up of a, a mobile boutique has been about the same, which is interesting. Yeah. 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 And it is like a wedding, I swear. 
it's just I, I feel like it just I mean I don't have my own mobile boutique but I feel like it's just all those little costs sneak up on you a little tray here a little shelf there oh let me spurge <laughs> on the nicer floors and before you know it you know <laughs> so um but yeah but I'm glad uh she's achieved success so far and hopefully she'll have a big party for her one year anniversary all right folks I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget, go to iTunes, rate us, leave a review. We really appreciate it. It helps us get noticed on iTunes. So go there right now. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Open your phone. And if your friends don't, I mean, (laughs) open your phone. And if you don't have an iPhone, but your friend does, like ask your friend to rate us. (laughs) (laughs) um so remember to support the podcast you could do uh you can support us a couple of ways the first way is you could um do like a uh, pledge to our podcast and you can go over to start a fashion truck.com slash patreon or just click the microphone on one of our pages to get to the patreon page Or um, if you're thinking and or (laughs) if you're thinking about starting a Shopify site and you know we love our Shopify sites, especially me, uh, you could go to startafashiontruck.com slash Shopify to get, what is it, 15 days free? 14. Oh, 14 free days. So be sure to do that so we could get a little credit and a little love. All right, guys. Thanks for parking here. Bye.